this is Prince of Somnia, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy V! Last time, we got introduced to our four heroes! And in this episode, I want to make some preparations here in Tool, before we head off to, uh, the Wind Shrine. Well, I guess they're all going for Grog. Alright, we'll see you around, Ferris. You try to leave town, Ferris will automatically rejoin your party, so don't worry about it. So let's talk to this guy first. He'll teleport you over here to the Greenhorns Club. It's kind of like a... It's basically a tutorial house right here. So let's go in here. Not that I really need much of a tutorial for this game, but, uh... Oh well. So yeah, if you want a whole bunch of tutorials... Uh, oh crap. Okay, well, I kind of fell into that one, but uh, yeah. If you want a whole bunch of tutorials, you can just talk to these guys in here, or wait for me to explain stuff. Right now, this guy is showing you how to stick people into the back row. Uh, you just... All you have to do is press left on the control pad, and you'll hover over the icons of the characters, and you can just press A on them twice, and you'll send them to the back row, so... Uh, there you go, you can control that yourself. Oh, really? We got a hundred gil in here, and a tent in here, and a phoenix down, and a potion! Alright. So let's see. That's that. That. There we go. Sorry, I just gotta mark stuff off on my treasure list. Uh, yeah, I learned from last time, viewers. Hmm? What does he mean by that? Maybe he's talking about this secret passage! Sorry to steal that stuff from H.C. Bailey, but I just couldn't help it that time. So yeah, sometimes there are false uh, false walls in the air, uh, inside buildings that you can just walk through. Um, there's a certain ability later in the game that'll let you uh, see them at any time, but we don't have that quite yet. Oh, a present? Sure. It's a trap! Yeah, no, there's just a goblin in here, so... Nothing really to worry about. I think this is a slightly different variety of goblin. Uh, I think they can drop leather hats, but eh, that's not so important right now. Let's see, that one uh, gave us a leather shoe for defeating it. Or leather shoes, rather. Uh, let's give that to Bartz. I'm just gonna stack as many stuff as I can on him. You jerk. Oh, really? Let's take a look at the options. Sure, why not? Config, rather. Uh, we've got battle mode, you can do wait or active. If you set it to wait whenever you're selecting targets and spells, uh, the ATB gauge for all the enemies will freeze, and all your allies for that matter. Uh, active, they won't do that. Uh, I'm gonna set it to wait because I don't have nearly good enough uh, reflexes. In fact, I think I'm just going to set everything to uh, leave everything as it is right now, so. But down here, we also got a bestiary, which we can uh, look up for all the enemies we fought so far. He can even tell you all of their uh, weaknesses. But I'm not going to go for a full best uh, bestiary. Uh, I might try, but I don't think I will. So anyway, I think that's all we can do in here in the Greenhorns Club. So let's uh, explore more of the town. Why not? Maybe chat up a few people. Uh, okay. Oh. Whoa. That's a lot of people. Really? Uh, how are meet? N never mind. Never mind. Oh, so they amplified the wind crystal's power. 
That seems like a really bad idea. But then again, I have played this game before. We've got another potion in there. Always make sure to check as many stuff as you can, or as many of the things as you can. Uh, there's secret treasures everywhere in this game. Oh, the beast in the canal only targets women. Remember that for later. Hmm, Zok. Who's Zok? Oh, he built the canal. Well, if he built it, why wouldn't he call it Zox Canal instead of Torna Canal? I don't know, you'd think you'd build something, you'd name it after yourself. I mean, that's how engineers work, right? Got another phoenix down in there. That's... That actually kind of makes it sound like we found an actual phoenix in there instead of, like, its feathers or something. And we got another set of leather shoes. Let's see, let's equip that on Lena. There we go. Let's see. Well, let's look around. Why not? We might be able to find something in here. Who knows? I do have a treasure list this time around, but I only marked which treasures we can find in general. I didn't mark like specific locations or anything like that. So that's why I'm kind of checking around everywhere. Cause who knows, you might find something. It's all part of the exploration of this game. But no one's home right now, so... Oh well. We'll just have to check back later. Well, I think that's all we can do out here, so let's go to the bar and get drunk! No, no I'm just, j I'm just kidding. Oh, the captain's upstairs. That's nice. Uh, I mean, I know he kind of looks like a lady, but, uh... Or maybe he just goes that way. I don't know. Uh, I think it's a captain, not a boss. Let's sit over here and get a lap dance! Alright! Rated E10 and up, viewers. No, no, I'm just kidding. Woo! How did Nintendo manage to... Nah, never mind. Anyway, the real reason why I wanted that lap dance wasn't for the lap dance at all, but for this piano. I don't know, I just thought it'd be fun to play a little bit on the piano. Wow, we suck. But maybe we'll only get better with practice. Hmm. Well, that's just a little bit of fun thing to do. Actually, uh, it's very important for a lot later in the game that you actually play on that piano. You'll see why later. But every time you find a piano, you want to play on it at least once. Just trust me on that, viewers. As with most Final Fantasy games, there's a lot of stuff you have to do near the beginning that won't make sense until much later on, so... Oh no. Every time you hear this theme, viewers, you just know something stupid's gonna happen. I guess even the guys want him, huh? Huh, <laughs> huh. Uh, hey, Ferris. I really don't have much of an explanation for that. I guess he's not in the mood to talk right now. Hmm. Oh well. I'm getting out of here. Well, let's look at the inn. 
Let's see what they got over here. Hmm. Nothing much. I don't think there's anything hidden in like fireplaces or anything like that, but it, eh, it wouldn't hurt to check. You could stay at the inn if you wanted to, but I, I don't think it's worthwhile. Oh, did I check that barrel yet? I don't think I did. No, I definitely did not, because there's 150 gil in here. Let's... <clears throat> Excuse me, let's keep moving on then. Uh, no, 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 not in here. Uh, how much money do I have, by the way? Over a thousand. Well, that should be enough, I hope. I want to go in here first. This is a magic shop. They sell various spells. Now, we can't actually use these yet, but I do want to buy some for later. Uh, buy the Blizzard spell and the Cure spell. Uh, I wouldn't worry about getting Libra right now, uh, unless you're new to the game and you just want to scan enemies to see what they're weak to. Let's see, we've got a weapon shop over here. Every time you go to an equipment shop, bears will show up so you can just have him in your party temporarily, uh, long enough to see what stuff he can equip. Uh, I want to buy a broadsword. Just the one. Uh, we'll get another one soon enough. Uh, I want to equip that to Bart's. Uh, later on, we'll equip the uh, knife we have to Barris. Is there anything in those boxes over there? No. Oh well. Let's see, here in the armor shop, let's just give these boxes a little look-see. Hey, hey, get back here! Let's see. Huh. Wait a minute, who? Oh, uh, that's probably Ferris. Uh, anyway, um, I want to buy... I want to buy... Oh, no, 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 not 11 more. I want to buy two more leather caps. We're going to find a third one later. Uh, and I want to buy... Three leather shields. There we go. Let's see. We can equip the leather shields in the left hand. They don't have any defense boost, but they do have a chance of evading all damage. Uh, in this game, blocking stops all damage from happening, and it's determined by your evasion stat. So, that's pretty nice. Uh, give everyone except for Galif a leather shield for right now. And then make sure everyone also has a leather cap. The reason why I don't want to give Gar uh, Galif... It Garrett. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's, that's the last LP. The reason why I don't want to give Galif a leather shield right now is because... We still don't have a weapon for him, so I'd rather not equip him with anything right now. Alright, I think that's all of my preparations that I wanted to get out of the way. No, no, we're not trying to give you the slip. Alright, so now we got uh, Ferris back in the party here. Let's equip him with stuff. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I do actually want to give Gallus the knife. Never mind. I thought, uh, the weapon Ferris started off with was a little bit weaker. My bad. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Alright. So now let's actually head on to, uh, the Wind Shrine. There are no, uh, you can't get into random encounters on the ocean. Um, you can't get anywhere within the Torna Canal right now, and that's, that's that area right there. Uh, on the world map near the Torna Canal, you can run into really powerful enemies called Bandersnatches. I would not fight them right now, because chances are they'll one-shot you if you try. So this is the Wind Shrine. Let's go in here first. Oh, I guess these guys recognize Lena. Oh no, there are MONSTERS in the shrine! sound good. Well, yeah, maybe we should take a look. Uh-oh. 
Well, that doesn't sound good. Hey! Oh. Okay, uh, that's weird. I don't know why it's... Well, never mind. Anyway, you talk to this guy and you get five free potions. And if you check this pot, uh, you get free HP and MP restoration. So, uh, that means it's time for me to run from 15 battles again. All right. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that off screen right now. And I'll see you guys soon enough. It is if I can find enemies on the first floor. I'm not sure if there are any. Well, let's go on to the second floor and look. I'm pretty sure there are enemies up here. There we go. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I went ahead and ran from those 15 battles off screen, like I said I would. So let's talk about these new enemies here. We've got black goblins. These guys can uh, use goblin punch, which is a sort of weird ability that deals more damage uh, depending on whether or not uh, you're at the same level as the opponent. And we've also got... Uh, I think those were white serpents. Uh, they can paralyze one of your characters, which is annoying. In there, we got a tent. Uh, these guys are easy enough. Unfortunately, everyone's so strong, we can just kill these guys pretty quickly. So that's pretty nice. That's interesting. Well, that tent didn't seem to be on my treasure list. I wonder why. I must have missed it. Anyway, in here is a consecrated circle. You can use them to either rest in a tent or cottage, or to save your game. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, well, this is an old file. Wow, did I really do that? Never mind. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's save in this file. That was an old file from a long time ago. I actually beat the game myself on a different uh, system, so... Let's see... I think that's the way forward. If I recall correctly. And for right now, battles are so short that I might as well just show them off right now. Later on in the game, the battles will get a little bit longer and I'll start editing them out. Yeah, that was the way forward. And here we got another leather cap. So yeah, this is the uh, one that I didn't buy earlier. Really helps to know what to buy earlier in a game when you know everything that you can get in the relatively near future, doesn't it? Saves on money. Gill, or whatever. I don't know why they call it Gill in Final Fantasy, anyway. It seems like such a weird name. Well, who cares? Oh, and here we got another new enemy. We've got Mold Winds. Uh, those guys can cast the Arrow spell on you. Uh, it's kind of dangerous. It'll do quite a bit of damage to you at this point in the game. Uh, Manny Wizards can use uh, single tar or multi-targeting uh, either Fire Ice or Fire Blizzard or Thunder spells on your party. Um, but uh, the Moldy Winds and Manny Wizards can only use their attacks once in a battle. Once they do that, they'll run out of PP. Er, not PP. MP! God, I'm just, uh, my mind's still in Golden Sun mode, isn't it? Oh, I suppose I should address the fact that I'm making this episode uh, before I've even finished Fire Red. Uh, yeah, I decided to keep moving even though I'm still a little bit behind in those, but uh, oh well. Anyway, in here we get another broadsword. This is why I told you not to buy any before, because we can just slap that onto Ferris and hand down his old weapon to Galuf. There we go. So now everyone's got all right attack power. That's all the stuff we have equipped right now. So now let's take on the big bird. Incoming! All right, it's boss time against the Wing Raptor himself. This guy will use the Breathwing ability. Uh, it'll take off a quarter of your HP for every single party member. So, yeah, you really gotta watch out for that. It's a quarter of your max HP, too, so... I hope you're used to seeing the Breathwing ability, viewers. 
Anyway, usually once uh, he uses the Breath Ring ability twice, he folds up his wings. Uh, when his wings are folded, don't attack him or he'll counterattack, and it'll hurt. Anyway, everyone seems to be really low on HP, so I'm just going to use a potion for a couple rounds right now to make sure no one gets killed. If you do lose someone, there's always Phoenix Downs, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But you gotta select an item twice in order to use it. So yeah, you see how he's folded in his wings? Now you just gotta wait a little bit. Yeah, so don't attack him when his wings are folded. Fortunately, when his wings are folded, his only ability is that counter-attack, so uh, once he unfolds his wings, then you can just go all out. Let's see. Uh, Lena, why don't you potion Ferris so that he doesn't get killed by the next attack? Usually, this boss's pattern is to use Breathwing twice, and then fold his wings. So let's get our HP up a little bit more right there. I think that should be good enough. Well, sometimes bosses do break pattern. Uh, yeah, Lena, why don't you get another potion in there? Try not to let anyone die. Alright, we got him. So yeah, not all that tough, but most bosses aren't all that hard to begin with, so I wouldn't worry about it. So let's keep on moving. Hmm, I could have sworn there was... Treasure I'm missing. Yeah, we can handle three Manny Wizards. Just about everyone can one shot these guys now. Eh, maybe I was wrong. I'm just gonna move on. Anyway, so this is the Wind Crystal Room, but. Ah, nuts. The crystal shattered. It's gone cracked! What's going on? Hmm, another crystal. What's up with this? Uh, I don't know what this is all about. I really don't think they mention this much later on in the game anyway. Maybe one of you out there can explain to me what this cutscene's all about. I don't know, maybe it's like the blessing of the crystals for these guys or something like that? I, I don't really know. Or like imbuing them with their essences or something. Oh, well, whatever. Eh, not sure. Huh? Oh, he's a ghost. How did that happen? The chosen one. So yeah, that's basically our mission: is to stop the other crystals from shattering, to save the world from some evil dark one. Basically, standard JRPG fare. 
Not that this game ever took itself seriously to begin with, but, uh, oh well. What are those? Crystal fragments, huh? Oh. What does it mean by that? It means that we've got job classes! Alright! So yeah, I was saying before about all the abilities we can get later on. Uh, they come from the job crystals that we get out of Shattered Crystals. How that works, I'm not sure, but whatever. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. So anyway, let's take a look at the new jobs we just got here. Uh, we've got Knight, Monk, Thief, White Mage, Black Mage, Blue Mage, and, well, Freelancer is what we've been in before. So anyway, yeah. Now we've got job classes to play around with. This is uh, why I love this game so much. Uh, the job class system. Because it's just really interesting to play around with, mess around with job classes, and see what strategy works with you. Anyway, we've got Knights. Uh... They tend to have like really good HP and defense. They make for the best tanks in the or be really good tanks. Um, they also have an ability that lets them cover uh, enemy or allies with low HP uh, to keep them from dying from a physical attack and stuff like that. We also got monks. Uh, they're really good at doing lots of physical damage to an enemy, and they can also fight barehanded without any loss in power. Uh, there's a special damage formula just for barehanded monks, so that's pretty nice. Thieves uh, do what you think they what you think they would do. Uh, if you're playing the Super Famicom version, uh, if you have a thief in your party, you can hold down the B button and run around. If you're playing the Game Boy Advance version, you do that and you'll run around even faster! Uh, thieves are really, really good in this game because, well, stealing stuff is nice, but they also have nice agility too. Uh, and they have the Find Passages ability, which is excellent. White Mage are uh, basically your healing, have all your healing magic. Uh, they're pretty important in the early game. Maybe not so much late game, but I still want to use one. Black Mages are your offensive mages. Uh, just like the White Mages, they're really good early game, maybe not so much later game. But they're pretty useful now. Now, Blue Mages are quite, is po quite possibly the best job class in the game. At least for mages. Uh, they can learn monster abilities, which basically is like uh, the arrow spell or the vampire ability, uh, and then they can use them yourself, which is really nice. Uh, later on, when we start getting a whole bunch of uh, blue mage abilities, uh, it'll become sort of like a utility kit mage class, which is really, really nice. Uh, it's incredible to use, but only if you know how to use them and where to find your blue magic spells. Fortunately, I do! So, yeah, I'll be making use of that. Now, as with any game with job class systems, you can pretty much have everyone do everything. But where's the fun in that? So, I am, for the most part, going to forbid crossing over into other people's job classes. I'm going to keep everyone within, like, the same sort of role set that I want them to have. There's going to be a couple of exceptions where I really just can't do it without crossing over job classes, uh, but that's just because I'm not the best at this game. I mean, I, maybe I could do it if I got lucky, but you sometimes I don't, I'm not so lucky at all, so there's that. So anyway, right now I want Bartz to become a knight, uh, mostly because he's really good at tanking. Oh. <clears throat> When you change into a job class, you gotta switch around your abilities. Uh, right now, we don't have any other extra abilities to speak of, but when you do, you can set them into the empty slot. Uh, every job class has a fixed job command and an empty ability slot that you can make use of. So, that's pretty nice. And then, uh, if you have the optimi uh, optimization uh, uh, settings set up, uh, it'll just optimize your equipment for you. Uh, you can see there are the types of weapons uh, knights can equip. They can equip knives and swords uh, and shields as well. So yeah, they make for really nice tanks. Uh, obviously, you want to have uh, Bart's up in the front row for this. Now, Lena, I want to be a healing slash support mage uh, for this 
playthrough. So I want to put her into the White Mage Shop class. It makes for really good healing right now, so I want to keep it that way. Unfortunately, we don't have any stabs for her right now, so she's kind of bare-fisted right now. I also want to set her into the back row because, well, she's not going to be doing much physical fighting. Now, Galif is going to be my offensive and utility kit mage, so I want him to work on black and blue magic. <laughs> kind of sounds violent. Yeah, so I want to work. I want him to work on those too. Uh, you can walk through. Uh, I'm gonna walk back down to the bottom floor of this place so I can start working on my job classes. Uh, you might want to consider starting off with a black mage. Uh, let's see, the white serpents in here are weak to ice, which is why I told you to buy the blizzard spell earlier. But there's also enemies here that can teach you blue magic, so... I'm gonna start off with Galif as a blue mage, uh, up until such a time as he gets... Uh, the ability to learn and cast blue magic without having to be in the job class. Then I'm gonna switch him over into the black magic class, because that's really all I want out of the blue mage anyway. At least for right now. Uh, I'm actually gonna keep him in the front row right now, because blue mages can still do quite a bit from there. And last but not least, Ferris. Ferris is going to be my lightning bruiser for this point in the game. Uh, eventually I want him to start working on Thief, but for right now, uh, I want him to learn uh, Monk up until he gets the uh, barehanded and counter abilities. Uh, those are two really good abilities that he can make use of later on, so yeah. Uh, the fixed job command for Monk is Kick, it's basically a physical attack that hits all enemies, which is really nice. So yeah, definitely keep Ferris in the front row there. So anyway, uh, I'm going to walk back off screen uh, to the bottom floor of this place. Uh, on the way, I want to try and learn a couple of blue magic spells. Uh, the Black Goblins can teach you Goblin Punch, and the Mold Winds can teach you Arrow, but the Mold Winds can only cast it once, so you gotta watch out for that. Uh, as for how blue magic works, uh, basically the only way you can learn new blue magic spells is to have the character in question be hit by uh, the spell in uh, the spell you want. Well, let's try this out. Let's see if we can get the... Uh... Oh, nuts. Yeah, that is one issue with the mage, or the monk, when trying to learn blue magic. Yeah, they tend to counter a lot, and, well, that's no good, as I'm so fond of saying. So you might actually want to consider using a thief when you're going for this, but, uh, whatever. Oh, I should have used kick. Anyway, yeah, as you can see, the monk makes for a really good physical attacker. Uh, the knights, uh... Set fixed ability, uh, guard, it neutralizes the next physical attack that the uh, knight will take, so there you go. Yeah, all job classes have a fixed ability and a passive ability. Uh, the knight's fi uh, passive ability is the, uh, what's it called? It's the ability, uh, it's cover, yeah, that's it. Uh, it'll basically stop an attack from hitting a uh, character with low HP. Uh, the mages obviously have fixed abilities for uh, their respective spells. Oh wow, we've got a lot of mold wins here. Let's see if I can get them to cast what I want them to. Oh, and if you're low on HP, you can just have uh, Lena cast Cure. Let's just show that off right now, why not? Oh, yep, yeah, no, you're dead. If this gets a little too frustrating, I'm going to switch Ferris back into a thief, just until... Oh, right! He cast it on Galuf! So yeah, that's how you learn blue magic. You have to have it cast onto the blue mage that you want it to learn the spell, and the uh, blue mage has to survive through the end of the battle. Otherwise, you won't learn the blue magic spell. So yeah, now we've got Arrow. Uh... So that's how blue magic works. I'm going to stick around here for a little bit more and try to learn... Uh... I'm going to try to learn Goblin Punch from the Black Goblins in this area. Uh, and then I want to return to the Pirate's Cave, so, because you can actually learn uh, 
the vampire spell off those steel bats. So I'm gonna do that off screen and uh, meet you back over by the wind shrine. Did I just learn it? I think I just learned it. Well, whatever. I'm gonna kill everyone. So, oh, unfortunately, Par Ferris is paralyzed. Whatever. I think I just learned it. Yeah, I did just learn Goblin Punch. All right. Uh, yeah, a Goblin Punch deals a lot of damage if you're exactly the same level as the enemy. So yeah, I'm gonna head back to the Pirate's Cave and learn the Vampire Spell, and then I'll meet you back in front of the Wind Shrine uh, once I've done that. In the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy V! I actually almost forgot what game I was playing for a second there. It's kind of embarrassing. Anyway, yeah. See you guys then!